Hey kids, um, welcome to the Stylus Rumble Harmony Effects Guide to Particles. It's Particle Week, and today we're going to talk about moving your particles. So rotating, translating, scaling them in various different ways. First, you have to think about how you exactly you want to move it. There's a, a bunch of different ways you could go about doing that. We'll talk about translating. So if you want to move where your particles are being emitted from, and so moving your region, that's one thing. Changing where your particles are going, so the, like aiming your gun using your velocity or your gravity or what other, other action nodes you have going. And then there's moving the entire particle system, which you can do using your particle visualizer. So I'll start with the region. Here I've got a little planar region. I'll just reset it. So this is what it looks like with no animation on it at all. I can scale it down like this and translate it up like this. So now here is my emitter and all my stuff is going to come out of there. If I take out my gravity, it's a little bit more clear. Things are just being barfed out of this little circle. Now I can move the circle. So I can have it start over here and then animate its way across the screen. And you can see all my particles are just going to continue coming out of wherever that happens to be. I put my gravity back in there. You can see they're going to carry on the trajectory that they start. Emitter starts here. These little guys are going to come out here. Then they're going to come out and carry on and just stick to the ground because it's the emitter that's moving. And once the emitter has done its job and puked out the particles, then they're just going to carry on their merry way. Changing this position here is not going to change anything that's already come out of it. If you scale this, it's not going to scale your particles. It's just going to scale the emitter itself. So here we have a big emitter. I'll take off the gravity again. And the particles are kind of come out in a big surface area. But over here where it's smaller, then they're going to be coming out of a more narrow, a smaller emitter area. So scale doesn't affect particles, just the emitter size. And the same thing with rotate. So here, if I have a stretched out oval, I can rotate the oval. So now it's long and narrow vertically or I can animate it so that it's changing shape based on what I need it to be doing at the time. So it's really useful to be able to move around your region. Here, if I plug in this hose that I've created, I could use my all keyframes mode to set my region up to be where the hose is actually spitting out some water. And then if I connect it to the peg of this hose, I can animate my hose anywhere in the scene and it is going to follow along. So you wouldn't have to animate your region. You could just hook it up to your prop. Now the issue is if you decide to rotate the prop, that's not going to rotate the direction that the things are going. They're going to continue on whichever way they were going initially. So to actually change the trajectory of these things, you need to involve the action nodes. Here, our gravity is just a universal downward motion. So if I rotate this prop, I still want it to go down. That makes sense because gravity is still going down. But I want the initial velocity to be going in the direction of the hose. So what I can do is just plug this peg into my velocity. The simplest way is to make sure that the prop is actually aligned with the zero velocities. So this is just all zeroed out. And then when you rotate it, it's going to uh, continue working the way you'd expect it to. If you do have a little bit of a, a velocity on here, so if you have one X already on here, then it's going to double up as it rotates and you're going to get a little bit of a confusion. Wee. And then you may have to go in here and uh, muck around with this as time goes on, which is a pain in the butt. And I don't like doing things twice. And lastly, if we wanted to move the entire system, we could use this particle visualizer. So you add a peg into the first transformation port, and now we can rotate it or we can translate it. And it's going to move everything, including where the things hit on this ground plane. But one thing that's important to know is you grab these regions if I display them using Shift F11. So if we move this, I want you to know that you aren't going to move your planar regions or your 3D regions, any of these emitters and stuff, these guys are not going to follow along. So if you do have animation on here, like if you do decide to turn it to the side like this, now the particles are going to be coming out to the side and then hitting a plane over here. And you can still influence these regions. So here I can rotate my plane. And you can see it's affecting the plane of this guy over here, but it's not actually lined up with one another. So it might be a little bit confusing to do this before you have your system set up 
the way you want it to be working, um, but it is a good option for moving the entire system. One thing I use this for most often is to scale it to match the size of the scene. So here I can make this very big system much smaller, but as you can see, the issue is that it's going to scale the particle size down as well. So that's when we get into scaling the particles themselves. You can use your peg here to scale the particles, but of course it's scaling the entire system. So you wanna make sure your system's sitting inside your camera view. And then within the particle visualizer itself, it has an option called global scaling factor. And this is usually where I'll scale my particles themselves. Because in different scenes, if I'm using this emitter for five or six different scenes, the camera might be in a very different place or the characters are scaled using some strange decision and I need to affect the size of the particles. I find this is just the most accessible way to change the their scale. But with scale, there's a few different ways you can think about it. You want to scale all of them the same amount. Do you want to have them start off small and grow bigger as they get older or smaller as they get older? Do you want the direction of them to stretch them along that axis? That's a possibility. Do you want to vary the scale of each of them so that they have different sizes? So all of these are different options we can use. So you could use the particle visualizer global scaling factor and you can keyframe this. So if we grab our particle visualizer down here global scaling factor is on our timeline and we can just key this as we go along and we can have this get much bigger or much smaller all the way up to 22 and now our sprites are going to get bigger as we go along in our timeline but of course they're all going to scale at the same rate the next way grab a size node plug it into our system so this has a trigger like most of them. One is on, zero is off. So, and we have constant size and input shape. We'll start with the constant one. This one works just like the global scaling factor down here. They're almost identical. So here I can just scale it way up because I need it to be. I can throw keyframes on there. If I come down here to my timeline, there's my size. And this size is available down here to just throw keyframes wherever we want. And it's going to scale them all uniformly across the board. The other option that this has that the other one doesn't is use input shape. And when you do that, this does nothing. The size, it just cancels that out. You need to put an item up here and it's asking for a region if you click the little doodad. So we can grab a 3D region and we plug this in. This is just a sphere. And if I unplug this, you can see that if you want these guys to have kind of a strange jumble of sizes, throwing this size module in there and then throwing a 3D region on there will automatically give you this collection of squashes and stretches throughout your particle sizes. Changing the scale of this, you can see that they're gonna get wider as your thing gets wider and they can you can change the scale vertically as well or you can change it uniformly by scaling up but they always start as kind of this weird mess of thing uh, throwing a planar region in here does nothing like they just they just don't appear so you do need to use some sort of a 3d region so i can't exactly see the logic in how this works but i just use this if i need a collection of different shapes and sizes as just a quick way to do that so you just throw in a sphere and you can muck around with it until you're happy with the collection of shapes and sizes that you get Whee. so that's a fun one to know constant size is the same as global scaling factor so i just use this the global scaling factor because it, i mean it's there okay next one we can go into our sprite emitter because there's 700 ways to do all the things <laughs> In here we have some controls that work with your age and your direction. Size over age, you can use this just like you would your global scaling factor. So here if I put it in four, they're all going to come out four times larger and they're going to stay that size. This is keyframeable. It's kind of a sneaky one. Here if I look in my sprite emitter, size over age, I can't actually find that in my list. So what I have to do is keyframe my sprite emitter and then I can grab it in here and it's got those frames available. I don't know why it doesn't show up in here. I don't know if there's a way to make it show up in here, but that's that's just how I get it to give me some keyframes. So the size over age, this side here is the size. And this scale here going across horizontally, the x-axis, is the age. So it's not actually using the timeline frames traditionally the way you would think. It's actually just using the age of each of these particles. So now as the particles get older, let me go in here so you can see, there we go. They're going to get bigger. Let's get rid of the velocity. There we 
there we go. So small ones start, and they get bigger as they go along. And you can, any just like any sort of animation, you can have them stay small a long time, kind of ease out of that size, and gradually get larger. Or more likely you're going to start large and then kind of go into a smaller size. Uh, if you want things to, when they die out, kind of taper out, instead of just coming to a dead halt and disappearing, then using the scale over age thing can get that effect for you. The next one is directional scale. You can use these, you can use both of these together, but I'm going to turn this one off so you can see what it's actually doing. So here it's just barfing the particles down and we need to hit align with direction for this to really to start doing something. Because it has to, you have to give it a direction to sort of stretch in. Okay, so I, I've just put this to five, you can put it to three. And what it's doing is as it goes along, it's stretching things out more and more. So if we put this up really high, you can see it's going to go super duper stretchy. But this can give you something like a sparkler effect. Kids sparklers you put on cakes and stuff. This is an easy way to get that sort of thing, to get it to stretch as it goes out. Or fireworks, some really cool effects without having to do a lot of frames. You can also have this one keyframed. And this one also isn't available down here. Boop, but I'm gonna throw some keys on my sprite emitter. Boop, boop. And now it's gonna give them to me in here as well. So the way this one works, this side again is just the scale as you would expect it to be. This x-axis is, is, is referring to time. So we can have it start a little bit stretchy and then get more stretchy over time. I'm gonna have to make that bigger for you to see. So, so I think you could probably use that for something like going into warp speed, how it's, you know, how they like start off as kind of like the stars are going fast and then they go super fast and are all stretchy and stuff. Then you might want to keyframe this. So it starts off a little bit stretched and gets super duper stretched. These guys down here, all these buttons are all directional. They all tell this guy what to do a little bit more. So right now, access to a line is the negative X. We could change that to the positive X, which doesn't have a huge difference positive y it's going to cut it uh sideways so that's giving you a very different look negative y is going to look a lot like positive y and then you can flip the axis of your particles down here using these guys so even if you have those off you can still do that you can see there the x-axis you can see your guys are just flipping now they're flipping up and down I find it it's just simpler to go into my sprite at that point and then I can tell it what to do here. I find that a little simpler, but th there are options in here if you want to play with that. Use rotation of particle. So that'll get us into our final thing, which is actually rotating these particles. Okay, so we've translated them, we've scaled them, now we want to rotate them. This has to be on, and in many of the examples you pull in, this will be off, and it's so hard to find. Ooh. So <laughs> If you go into your modifiers, you can grab rotation velocity. So this, similar to this velocity, is just a rotation velocity. You can plug this in, and our particles now are going to be rotating. Let me take off my regular velocity. I'll be able to see them a little better. We can follow them. All right, so now if we follow one of our particles, so let's follow this guy here. As we frame along, you can see that it is rotating counterclockwise. And these stars sitting on the floor, those are pretty easy to see. Let's just take off this gravity. So now as we create particles, these ones are just staying still. And you can see that they're rotating around the z-axis here. Turn this off, we'll turn it to x. Now these guys are floating around the x-axis, which looks really adorable. Whee! And then the y-axis. They're going to spin this way. So you can use any collection of these to get them to do what you want. And the more axes you put in, the more chaotic this rotation is going to be. Constant axis is just going to keep this all the time. Um, I'm going to do this. Uh, interpolated axis, you can give them uh, kind of a range. So we could do this, where this is 1, and this is 0. Um, these are zero, these are one. So now it's going to flip these things in all sorts of crazy directions. 
whatever it feels like. These guys down here are just the speed, so the minimum degrees per frame, 8 degrees per frame, 15 degrees per frame, so of course you could turn jack that way up. And now they're going to spin so fast, it's just unreasonable. Um, so keeping these in sort of a, a smaller area is going to be, uh, they're just going to be more visible. And then input shape always just seems to be uncontrollable craziness. I can never really understand how the logic works by the... Like, if I put in a sphere, uh, then they're going to rotate like that. I don't know why, but you can do that <laughs> if you need craziness. But I, I, constant axis just is the simplest to understand. You can just have them flip vertically, horizontally, or use your Z to have them uh, rotate around in little circles. Whee! So that's it. Now you can translate using either your planar region of your sprite emitter is going to move that guy around. Your particle visualizer, you can use this one like an apply peg transformation. You can actually add an apply peg transformation, but that'll just be really weird and confusing. And know that things like your velocity, your planar regions, um, and your particle visualizer, all of these can be plugged into props and stuff so that they follow along. Okay, scale can be done in a ton of different places. Your particle visualizer, you have your global scaling factor. You have your size module, which you can pop in there. You can use constant size down just by plugging something in. All of that is keyframeable. Or you can use the input shape and throw a sphere on there just because you want all your stuff to be crazy shapes and sizes. You can go into your sprite emitter go to your rendering tab, and then you can change your size versus the age. You can change your size versus the direction. So if you want things to be really streaky as they go along, we can turn that off. We can turn that on, sorry. Whee, now it's shooting stars. And we can also just throw a rotate in there for feeling crazy. And now things are going to uh, rotate along with the stuff that we put in here. <laughs> so that's a ton of information to digest, so hopefully some of it's stuck in there. You can just watch it with the speed on really slow. <laughs> but all of this stuff is just to, to move this stuff around. Okay, so if there's any questions or anything wasn't clear, please leave a question down below and I will totally get back to you or make a video that clarifies things a little bit more. The next video is going to be another particle video about how the sprite emitter projects sprites. So the, this, all of these things, I'm going to explain what every single one of those means in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Like, share, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do, and I will see you in the next particle video because it's particle week.